yeah. Okay, there we go. Just don't. It's streaming.
said that last time. I, I don't know how to adjust it. May not be possible. Because it was off when I came in. I'm learning. I'm Okay, I want to call together this regular meeting of the mayor and the city council of the city of Walks Hatchet. We can tell from this chamber at this time. Mary Lou, would you like to give an invitation, please? Would you stand, please? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here this evening. We pray that you would provide your guidance as we look through the matters that have come to the attention of the city council and pray that you would give us wisdom in addressing each one. We pray that you would um, help us to understand the matters that are important and to, to understand the reasons that, that we do the things we do. And we, in, in all of those things, we pray for your wisdom and guidance. Uh, go with us through this meeting and through the rest of this week. Protect us and keep us within your hand. For we ask in your son's name, amen. amen. <coughs> Okay, item number five, public comments. Persons may address the city council on any issues. This is the appropriate time for citizens to address the council on any concern, whether on this agenda or not. In accordance with the state of Texas Open Meeting Act, the council may not comment or deliberate on such statements during this period, except as authorized by section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code. Anybody would like to speak about anything? Come to the podium. I'm going to go to item number six, consent agenda. All matters listed under item six, consent agenda, are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be separate discussion of these items. Approval of the consent agenda authorizes the mayor and the city manager to execute all matters necessary to implement each item. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda for separate discussion and considered by consideration by any member of the city council. I entertain a motion for item 6A through 6A. Move to approve item 6A through L. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Yeah, passes. Item number seven, introduce an honorary council member. I think council member David Hill is going to do this tonight. Yes, I do. Um, tonight's uh, honorary council person is uh, Caleb uh, Seth High, sitting right here. He's the son of... Um, Cynthia Williams and Miss Williams is out here, uh, sitting beside my wife right there. Uh, he's a student of the athlete at Waxhatchee High School. Caleb played for the Waxhatchee Indian football team as a linebacker and the captain. Uh, he's a member of the Iron Indian powerlifting team. I brought this article because most people don't uh, get to see this stuff. Uh, and I told uh, Councilman Beatty that uh, Caleb couldn't, couldn't lock his legs out at 695. Uh, Chuck said that in his day, uh, they didn't pick up that much weight. So, uh, <laughs> but is that amazing? 695 pounds, and I'm thinking, fat 50 pound bag of concrete weighs me and wears me out. And 600, it's just amazing, anyhow. Um, but Caleb is also a member of WISD's uh, team school board, holding the position of state uh, of president. He was also voted Mr. Walks at your high school by his peers. Uh, Caleb will be attending the University of Mary Hardin Baylor, where he will continue to play football, and he's majoring in sports medicine. 
Uh, also on his jacket, his football jacket, is a scripture from the Old Testament. Most of y'all have read the Old Testament, I'm sure. Uh, Numbers 13 and 30. And it says, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. And I'm proud to, uh, for him to be here tonight. I know his mother is. I uh, poured a lot into him, and he's a, a wonderful ambassador for our city. So thank you for being here tonight. Okay. Okay, item number eight. <clears throat> I'm going to present a proclamation proclaiming May 7, 2018, as made a Derwin J. Moody Day in Waxahachie. Here. Thought you were. I'm going to read it to you first, okay? Then I'll come here. Whereas Major Durbin Moody, a native of Waxhatch, Texas, completed the officer candidate course and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in August 1998. And whereas upon completing the basic school and the logistics officer's course, Major Moody was assigned to the 2nd Maintenance Battalion, 2nd Force Service Support Group at Camp Virginia, North Carolina where he served as an operations officer, motor transportation officer, and the headquarters of service company commanding officer. And whereas in January of 2003, Major Moody executed permanent change of assignment orders to 2nd Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion, 2nd Marine Division, where he served as a logistics officer. During his tenure, he deployed to Iraq supporting Regimental Combat Team 1 and 5 in direct support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. And whereas in July 2005, Major Moody executed permanent change of station orders to Marine Corps Logistics Base, Albany, Georgia, where he served as operations officer, officer in charge of range operations, and as a headquarters and support company commanding officer. During his tenure, he also deployed to Afghanistan in direct support of Operation Enduring Freedom. And whereas in February 2008, Major Moody executed permanent change of station orders to the Joint Guam Program Office, Office of the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Energy, Installation, and Environment in Agat, Guam. He served as the infrastructure and logistics officer in direct support of the rebasing of Marine Corps assets from Okinawa, Japan to Guam. And whereas in July 2010, Major Moody executed permanent change of station orders to 1st Marine Aircraft Wing, 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force, Okinawa, Japan, where he served various billets to include the headquarters, deputy assistant chief of staff, G4, operations officer, and executive officer for Marine Wing Headquarters and Support Battalion. During his tenure, he was selected to fulfill an individual augment in the central command area of operation and deployed to Kuwait in direct support of Operation New Dawn and Enduring Freedom as a mobility transportation officer. In August of 2013, he executed a permanent change of assignment orders to the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force Headquarters, G4, and deployed to Diego, did I say it right, Major? Diego. Diego, South Korea, as a logistics liaison officer. And whereas in January 2015, Major Moody executed a permanent change of station orders to 8th Marine Corps District, Marine Corps Recruiting Command in Fort Worth, Texas, as a district logistics officer. And whereas Major Moody's civilian education includes a Bachelor of Arts in Music from Texas Tech University and a Master of Arts in Transportation and Logistics Management from American Public University. And whereas Major Moody's personal decorations include the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Commendation Service Medal, the Meritorious Service Medal, and the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal with Gold Star. And whereas Major Moody and his wife, you got yeah. Huh? Just calling it. <laughs> okay. Have four children. Do Young, who's 17. Sho Young, who's 15. Dominique, that's 14. And Ariana, that's 13. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> now, therefore, I, Mayor Kevin Strength, along with the entire city council, do hereby proclaim May 7, 2018, as Major Derwin Moody Day. And in Waxahachie, and encourage the citizens of Walks Hatch and surrounding area to thank him for his honored service. Proclaim this seventh day of May 2018. Thank you for being here.
That was very nice to be able to do that. Thank you for coming, Major. Sure. <clears throat> and, and I understand, Ms. Brown, you're in the audience too? Ms. George Brown? Yeah, I knew George too. My mother was Linda Street, used to be the city secretary. Okay. I want to ask you one more thing before I start this. How do you like the splash pad at George, George Brown's Park? Have you seen it? Well, you know, nobody ever used to know that George's Park was there. And, and you know, we had the plaque and everything up there. And, uh, but now every kid in town knows who George Brown is. <laughs> so I hope you like it. Number nine, present a proclamation proclaiming May 28th as Preservation Month. <clears throat> Anybody here get this one? Okay, whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth and sustainable development, revitalizing neighborhoods and fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability, and whereas revitalization through historic preservation is one of the best methods of sustainable economic development in this country, and whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages and all walks of life and all ethnic backgrounds, and whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by the dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people. And whereas preservation has contributed to the beauty and economic vitality of the city of Waxhatchee. And whereas this place matters is the theme for National Preserva Preservation Month 2018 sponsored by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Now, therefore, I, Kevin Strength, the mayor of the city of Waxhatchee, Texas, along with the entire city council, do hereby proclaim May 2018 as National Preservation Month and call upon the people of Waxhatchee and Texas to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. Proclaim the seventh day of May 2018. Nita? Um, this is what our national interpretation is based on. We did receive a 
store of 114 this year. Um, we have to have a non-HRC. She's not good with just 100, you know, every year. <laughs> so we started off with 98, then we got to 105, now we're up to 114. And I don't know if I can continue. The home monitor. <laughs> I don't know if I can continue to, to keep that tight, but I'm going to try. Um, anyway, I thank y'all for your support of that. Um, I do just want to say one thing. One of the things that, you know, I report on is just everything that our program does. We had the farmer's market grand opening. Um, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before. We had our biggest day in many, many years. The farmer's market vendors reported sales of over $8,500 for Saturday morning from 8 to 1. So it, it's, you know, this town is just amazing. Everything's off the charts. It's not hard to write this report when I have the material that, that the community gives me. So, Good. Even before you sit down, I, I was pushing it in the briefing session. How many years have we got the National Main Street accreditation? Since we rejoined the program right. in 2002, 16. All but one year. <clears throat> All but one year. That this, our this certificate early. this year says 12 years consecutively, which just happens to coincide with how long I've had this year. <laughs> 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 Did she take yourself, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, item 11, we're going to present the council with the Texas Travel Industry Association Best of Texas Award, Best City during the 2017 Texas State Tour. Go ahead. It's just award-winning times around here. Um, I'm happy to be here in front of y'all this evening, along with my other, my better half of my office, which is one of the boys right here on the front row. Um, and we do want to present to you this Texas Travel Industry Association Best of Texas, Best City Award for the 2017 Texas Study Tour. And as I said earlier, we competed against probably 15 other cities, lots of other attractions, where we had travel information counselors, people that work around the state, information visitor centers, that came and immersed themselves in North Texas. And out of all of North Texas that they experienced, they chose Waxahachie as the best city. And I think we would all agree to that. So. We, knew, we knew that already. Yes, I think we would all agree to that. So what that entailed was us curating 2.75 hours of experience for them, which also included them eating lunch. So we didn't have much time to take and show them walks of action, but I think what we did for them, the experience that we provided, not only our department, but along with many other ambassadors, our Main Street department, they were there to help roll out the red carpet and be a part of that tour. Our Chamber of Commerce helped led the way to roll out the red carpet. We had SAGU, we had their trombone section that played live music. I mean, we really, really did a great job for those 2.75 hours. So again, it's not just about show and tell nowadays, it's, it's about the experience. And uh, people are definitely a part of our experience, along with all of our wonderful preserved history and heritage. So, anyway, so that's a little bit about that award. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for your support. So then item number 12 gets us recognition of the National Tourism Week, right? Yes, sir. This week is our week to take and uh, let everybody know nationally about the economic impact that tourism provides not only for the United States and for the state of Texas, but also for Waxahachie. Um, the state of Texas, their research numbers stay a little bit behind, so we do have the economic impact numbers for 2016. And you will see there on the handout that I gave you, $59 million were spent in Waxahachie by tourists. Directly provided 490 jobs with the annual payroll of $18 million. Also, Waxahachie Food Tourism contributed over $1.7 million in local taxes and over $3.8 million in state taxes. What that means, folks, is they come here, we love on them, they spend their money, we capture those sales tax dollars, and we get to return them back to their homes. And then hopefully they'll just come back and do it over again and tell all of their friends about the time that they had. Uh, to celebrate National Tourism Week, this is what we do. We encourage everybody to be a tourist in their own backyard. Get out and experience Waxahachie and all those things. The splash pad, the courthouse, whatever it is that you haven't experienced in Waxahachie, take time this month to get out and do that. 
Also, we encourage you to use our new hashtag. It's one of our social initiatives called Hashtag Hatch Your Heart. It's the things that you love. It's the places in your heart. Hashtag Hatch Your Heart. So you'll each see a little coaster maybe at your place that you can take to your office with you. So on your social posts, remember to do that. Um, again, use that hashtag Hatch Your Heart. So anyway, we do appreciate everybody's support. Again, it's not just one and Monica's uh, job that we do each day. It's with everybody the help of all of our city departments that help us do what we do and also our residents and volunteers. So thank y'all for allowing us to do what we do. That's great. And hey, before you go, I wanted to thank y'all for the, the uh, festival, the uh, film festival, well, and all the hard work that y'all did. It was a lot of work, but it was really cool. Sweet well, story. since you brought it up, and yeah. I think it was actually on my, it was added on my to-do list also mentioned, through that event, we had, I think, 13 different states represented uh, with the film festival, along with our wonderful women in one section camp out event combined. Also, we had an international uh, tourist. We had two ladies from New Zealand that came specifically for that event. So it's just like uh, Councilman Singleton's always said, packaging and bundling, there's just great synergy uh, with that and great things can come. And uh, that's exactly what we did that weekend. And uh, I think it shows. Um, Mr. Lawrence has actually a lot of uh, comments from Facebook where those women posted on Facebook, not just saying our department, but all of the city of Wasatch departments that came to assist them that weekend, because they realized it took everybody to really provide the experience uh, that we provided. So <coughs> thank you to each of you that um, helped with that weekend. Well, thank y'all again, everybody. It was it's awesome. our pleasure. Okay. <clears throat> Item number 13, a public hearing on a request by David Hargrove, Lexi Grove Development, LLC. For an amendment to an ordinance number 2137 for the Garden Valley Plan Development District to increase the maximum lot coverage in the single family three base district from 35 to 50 percent uh, by main building and accessory structures. PD 18 0011. Tom, this is the last one. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a request uh, amending ordinance 2137 to increase. Uh, the uh, lot coverage from 35 to 50 percent uh, for the Garden Valley Plan Development. Uh, staff does recommend approval and is available for any questions. Okay. This is a public hearing. Anyone that would like to speak for or against this, please come to the podium at this time. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Are there any questions from the council? Here now we'll go to item number 14 and consider the proposed ordinance approving zoning change number PD-18-0011. Entertain a motion for item number 14. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Item passes. Item 15, a public hearing on a request by Kenny Garcia Elevation Solar LLC for a specific use permit to allow rooftop solar panel system use within a single family one zoning district located at 2204 Hyde Road, being 272 SM Dirt, 2.677 acres, property ID 181954, owner Gerald E. Skinner, Revocable Living Trust, uh, SU 18 0033. Sean. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a request for solar panels uh, on Howard Road. Uh, Mr. Skinner and I have met uh, and discussed the solar panels. His house is uh, located quite, quite a bit of distance off of Howard Road mm -hmm. and will be located on the rear of the residence. Uh, staff does recommend approval and is available for any questions. Okay. This is a public hearing. Anyone, anyone who would like to speak for or against this, please come to the at this time. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Go to item number 16 and consider proposed ordinance approving zoning change number SU 18-0033. Entertain a motion for item number 16. Move approval item 16. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Item 16 passes. Item 17, the public hearing on a request by Justin Hargrove for a specific use permit to allow a dance hall, tavern, or nightclub use within the central area zoning district located at 208 West Franklin, being lot 9B, block 8, 
The old town wants a hatchy 0.06 acres, property ID 170463, owner South Fork Capital LLC, SU 18-0029. So you wanna, you wanna explain that, Sean? Yes, sir. Uh, so this is a request for a specific use permit uh, for as what we are, are now terming a, a, a dance hall, tavern, or nightclub. It will be revised with our upcoming zoning ordinance to, to a, a bar in the downtown uh, central area. Um, so this request is made by Mr. Hargrove uh, for the plaid turtle. Uh, and I'd like to allow him to elaborate a little bit. Um, but staff uh, has received uh, two uh, calls in opposition, and then we did have one uh, written letter of opposition. Uh, Mr. However, Hargrove? I'm sorry? Yes. Yes, Mr. Hargrove. Uh, different Mr. Hargrove. Okay. Um, okay. However, staff does recommend approval. Yeah, I'm with you. Yes, sir. Okay. And you, you had how many? Uh, we had two calls in opposition and one uh, email. This is a public hearing. Either one of them would like to speak for or against us, please come to the podium at this time. Would you give your name and address to the city secretary, please? Yes. Justin Hargrove, 75 North Waco Street, Home Girl, Texas. Um, what it's going to be is going to be a draft house. I know the ordinance is a nightclub, dance hall, or tavern. It's the closest thing. We specialize in this craft beers. We'll have many different Texas craft beers and food. So we'll be more of a bar restaurant type atmosphere there. The reason we're asking for special permit is for 51% sale of alcohol, which I don't know if I will need it, but I'm just going the extra mile to get it taken care of now before I open it. Okay. Any questions for him? Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else like to speak? Okay, thank you. Anyone else want to speak for or against? Okay, hearing none, we're going to close the public hearing. 
I'm going to go to item number 18. We're going to consider proposed ordinance approving zoning change number SU 18-0029. Entertain a motion for item number 18. Motion approved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. I'll pass. Item uh, number 19, public hearing on a request by Charles Browning, Water Holdings, for a zoning change from Light Industrial mm -hmm. to Zoning District to a central area located 200 East Jefferson, Lean Lot 4A, Block 24, Old Town Waxhatchee, 0.161 acres, property ID 170483, owner Water Holdings, LLC, zoning case 18-0031. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what you have before you is a request um, for a zoning change from Light Industrial 2 to the central area. Uh, this request is an, uh, an accompaniment with the following uh, specific use permit request um, that does, uh, that is a bail bond application that does require uh, the, the central area uh, zoning district with that SUP. So this would be to change the zoning from Light Industrial 2 to central area. So bring another property into the central area, uh, meeting the uh, the uh, higher standards, being that it is the central area for the building. Okay. Any questions for Sean? <coughs> Sean, my question I've got, will the bail bonds face the garage, parking garage or face the jail? So I apologize, in this image, uh, the, the bail bond would be right here to the um, right of this door. Uh, so from here, it's it's on the corner, with the front door being just off the corner facing um, the garage. So you pull around the corner to go to the parking garage to see the bell bottoms. You pull out the parking garage to leave and see the bell bottoms. Yes, sir. So are there not implications? Uh, is this a permitted use without this adjustment? I didn't bring this up earlier, but I just got thinking about it. If it's part of the jail side, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. right? We can't see the old John Deere place or any of those spots that, you know, proliferate the bail bond activity. Right. This certainly puts it in a much more prime corner. I guess bail bonds is a permitted use. So not not without in the with the zoning change, yes. Right. So not without the zoning change, yes sir. <clears throat> and then the approval of the uh, accompanying SUP, specific mm -hmm. use permit. Also made a central area if we get another link for all street parking. Central area of course is not the I mean, for me, oh, I'm on my way out, but I'm not about building more bail bond spots around downtown. That's not the image I've been investing in the last 25 years in. Uh, I'm not against it, but the same one of them. Certainly hate to have it on the corner, <coughs> but you can see clearly from the county, county office buildings, uh, and that use is. Uh, so they do have to meet the central area requirements for signage. Um, I couldn't quote the, the ex exact uh, square footage off the top of my head. Isn't there another bail bond company just on down uh, Jackson Street, directly across from the entrance to the jail? Yes, ma'am. And then there's there's one. Where is that other one? Oh, the other. Yeah, the other one is uh, farther across, up. Across the street. Across uh, from the court Across building. from the court building. Yeah. Building. Well, anywhere you have a jail, you're going to have jail bond, a bail bondsman. <clears throat> okay, this is a public hearing. Anyone that would like to speak for or against us, please come to the podium at this time. Okay, here and now we're going to close the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from council before we go down the point? Okay, here and now we're going to consider proposed ordinance approving zoning change number ZC 180031. Entertain a motion for item number 20. 
Move to approve uh, zoning change ZC 18-0031. Uh, I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Get out of passes. Item 21 is a public hearing on a request by Charles Brown and Wild Holdings for a specific use permit to allow Belmont Agency use within the Central Area Zoning District located 200 East Jefferson, being Lot 4A, Block 24, Old Town Walks Hatchie, 4161 Acres, Property ID 170483, Owner Wild Holdings, LLC, SU 180032. So. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as stated in the previous zoning change request, uh, this would be the accompanying specific use permit for the actual uh, bail bond agency. Uh, as we've discussed in the uh, prior work session, they have received, uh, it is my understanding that they have received the state recommendation and, and have applied for the state licensing. So, I'm sorry, the, the county. County, the county, the county, the county bail bond board. Okay. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone would like to speak for or against us, please come to the podium. Yes, sir. Come to the podium. Steve. Would you give your name and address to the city secretary, please? Yes, sir. My name is Stephen Bell. My address is 12655 North Central West Pressway, suite 315 Dallas, 75243. I represent Mr. Jones. Uh, as I believe was stated by Mr. Brooks, he has been the necessary licensing moment in the state. He's been before your local Belmont board. He was approved. I believe October of last year. He also has a bill on office in Dallas and is in good standing with that office. Any concerns that you might have with regard to this issue, he runs a good business. He's never had any issues in Dallas County at all. He's met all the state requirements and he's met all your local requirements. Any location within the city of Waxahachie requires us to go through this process. He'll run a respectable business. I'm fully confident. I understand your concerns, Mr. Singleton. Um, but I, I think you'll find him to be a good tenant and a good citizen here in Walks Hatching and that's the truth. And I'm here any questions you might have on the location. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we're going to close the public hearing. We're going to go to item number 22, consider the proposed ordinance approving zoning change number SU. 18-0032. Entertain a motion for item 22. Uh, motion Mayor, just as a like maybe a point of order, is this actually a zoning change or is this granting of an SUP? SUP. It's still a zoning change. Okay. Okay. Uh, move to approve. I have a motion and I have a second. Please vote. Uh, passes. Okay, item number 23, consider a request by Brandon o o O'Donnell. Paid Dawson Engineers Incorporated for a preliminary plat of Dove Hollow for 610 residential lots and 19 open space lots, being 213.536 acres, situated in JW Wright Survey Abstract Number 1182. Property ID 192636, 192639, 192643, and 192645. The owner is 112 LLC of Mountain Creek Partners. The third LLC, a plenary plat 17-0171. Sean? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, what you have before you is a request for a preliminary plat. This is Dove Hollow. Um, they had previously been through uh, planning and zoning in January of this year, and uh, council had seen them uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, the applicant had went back and revised the, the plan according to uh, the understood council recommendations. Um, 
and I do have letters of uh, support for the construction of the roadways, uh, both north-south through the development, and then to the, uh, the west off-site of their development to be constructed by the developer. Uh, staff does recommend uh, approval for this preliminary plat and is available for any questions. Any questions for Sean? We're going to entertain a motion for item number 23. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Item passes. Item number 24, consider award a bid to Enviro Dine Systems Incorporated for the replacement of clarifier number two mechanism at the Hyde Road Water Treatment Plant. Mayor, uh, Council, this item is award of a bid, as you said, with Enviro Dine Systems for a replacement clarifier mechanism for clarifier number two at the Howard, Howard Road Water Treatment Plant. That's needed for some critical redundancy. Uh, this bid did come in $127,000 below staff's estimate. Uh, there is a companion item following agenda item number 25. It's a reimbursement resolution. This authorizes the reimbursement of working capital from the utility water fund from the proceeds of future debt. Okay. Any questions for Tommy? Okay, I'll entertain a motion for item number 24. Move approval item 24. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Okay, it passes item 25. This is a proposed resolution authorizing the reimbursement of the water funds working capital from the proceeds of future debt for replacement of clarifier number two at the Hyde Road Water Treatment Plant. Entertain a motion for item 25. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Item passes. Item 26 is comments. Tommy, you got anything to that? Well, Lori st stole my thunder. I was just going to brag on our employees a little bit, but we did get uh, we did get uh, several, e you know, a couple of emails and several Facebook posts that were uh, very complimentary to our, our staff and our parks, and and we had parks folks, streets, all the different departments out there helping out, and uh, with the weather and everything, they was actually helping move those travel trailers by hand and things like that. So uh, it was very, like I said, a lot of good comments. Well, in connection with the same event, um, uh, this was actually the first time I had had the opportunity to spend any time at the Crossroads Film Festival. And uh, I was really impressed. I went to see um, one of the movies uh, every night, Saturday night, and I just loved it. It was so good. Um, I guess I'm kind of a nerd for documentary movies, but um, uh, who knew that uh, Texas had a, had a musician that spent most of his career with the Rolling Stones? I didn't know that. Uh, anyway, it was, it was really nice, and in spite of the, the, the rainy weather, there were a good a good number of people there. It's very enjoyable. Well done. Yep. Like I said, I couldn't live six hundred pounds. You know, I was deep as a backstreet. Knock down pass and stuff like that. So we yeah. both uh -huh. You just said yo, right? <laughs> yeah, I said do that kind of stuff. Glad to have you here, man. You know, you know, come back and see us, okay? Yes, sir. And, and good luck, you know, down in Mary Harden Bay, you know. He, he was going to North Texas, very hard to make it. Glad to hear Major Moody, congratulations on a fine career. You know, of course, he grew up here, formerly in the South and all of that. You know, and his mom, Mrs. Brown. So, yeah, y'all do have to go by and see uh, George Brown play out. Okay. It's awesome. Yeah, it's one of the probably most used parts in, in the city. Michael? That's right. Thank you. Major, thanks for coming tonight. It's been my pleasure. And I want to say that it uh, looked like uh, Cinco de Mayo celebration went real good. Everything go real good? Yeah. That's great. Well, in case y'all don't know, our staff is generally downtown on the weekends working every kind of event that we've got. And it's, uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of 
a lot of total things around and parks people come in and help and street people come in and help and it's a it's a it's it's, it's a dance. So really thank everybody for doing what they do. Mark? Oh, a couple things. This is my farewell song from a council perspective and bear with me for a few minutes as I kind of run over a couple of things. Thirty nine votes short. That's what thirty years committed to this community. That's the difference. Thirty. Uh, my heart's warm sitting here listening to Anita and Lori and I'm sitting talk. And I'm going to tell a bit of a story here. But again, in 2001, I was commissioned to help downtown figure out how to revitalize itself. And the bank came in with $100,000 and hired a consultant and gave 75 people to sit down and figure out how do we vision, how do we vision ourselves out of a declining downtown. And <clears throat> it was fun and not fun and all those pieces, but put together an awesome economic plan that touches every aspect of government. And how do you make it work for the people, not against the people? Uh, Michael's a product of that. I interviewed seven or eight different people. We hired Michael on that uh, as our downtown director. Uh, Arthur Anderson guy, been out in the private sector. Who was trained in the school of, of public uh, of public business, but uh, who would ever guess we would be sitting here for today? Uh, I'll tell you, you know, I, I steal this from Joe Jenkins, and I was looking at, a, at Hargrove's first sign deal by Jim, by Joe Jenkins, our mayor of the time, and I, I steal the phrase. I love this. It's simple. I love this now. Uh, you know, there's not much I will not say. If it needs to be say, I will be the one to say. I will tell you that, you know, looking forward, I've had so many people, you know, talk to me. I was certainly sit back and go, oh my gosh, how in the world? You know, Miss Olson, three years. And I mean, she spanks me. And I go, yeah, God's got a plan. And that's where I have to come back to each and every time. But you know what? He's given me a set of skills. And while it's in the face of some people, I won't stop, and you gotta realize I was doing this 22 years before I was called council. Two decades. Before I came over here, <clears throat> I was looking at some board of my former board at back in 1987, December when I came on the board. And the insight that I got from serving with Rex Owens, Frank Lankenbecker, Marcus Harrison's through the supervisor, through Tony Godzilla, through Marcus Pollock, through Buck Rapp. It is directly from a great deal, a great deal of that. And while at this point I'll stay down for a year or two, because I will always say I'm here for one purpose, and the leisure of the citizens of this community. That by no means means I don't think still working on that side of the audience, which I did for almost 15 years before I got so developed that I have to run for council. No one asked me the right question. Um, again, love the city. I don't know what to do. You know, it's a big it's blessing when you go back and go, oh my God, 39 votes in 30 years. What is a guy supposed to do? Uh, what do you do? I mean, do what God expects us to do. Get up every morning, give, give thanks, and do your best. I was telling that to basically 50 or so of my friends that evening when we were sitting there going, oh my gosh, how does this happen? And, you know, I was on the other side, and Kevin and I text each other, I think after being stunned the next morning, and we're kind of going, I'm sorry. And I go, I'm not sorry. That's not, what, that's not the feeling I've got. I'm, I'm disappointed maybe on one side, but the net end is I've been turned free, right? So the other side of this is go, I've served this community, and Indentured servitude is not the right term when you do something you love, but how do you ever get blue? How do you get off the crazy train? You know, when it's your when it's your when it's your home. And at this point, Mrs. Olson's given me the, the get out of jail free part. Uh, but that by no means means I'm going anywhere. You know, you poor rascals. I, I steal I steal a deal from Obi Wan. You know, strike me down, I'll come back probably with more wrath and vigor. Um, but I'll tell you, it's centered in one thing. It's in 
for this community and a fear that I don't want our community to turn into Lancaster, Texas, or Wilma, or many others that when I grew up, they weren't bad places. And they would probably be mad at me today to say they're bad places, but Lancaster is not the community it was 25 years ago. Uh, I don't want that to happen this week. And I have a vested interest. I am a stakeholder. Those names I've shared with you before, the difference in so much of that is the, the amount of things that are at risk. My 264 employees at the bank, my 65 employees at the title company, the staff, the school board. I take this serious, y'all. And I don't know what, what in my life put that upon me to say, you know, like Dan sure pack a bag and still run the bank and do all those things and, and have fun somewhere else, but this is fun. And that's probably, you might need to check me in the middle war. You <laughs> said this is fun. But the simple truth is, it's nothing against the Belmont guy. I just don't want a big flashing sign saying Belmont's for everybody that comes and walks a hatchet. I have bled, sweated, and cried trying to get this poor downtown to a point where it's, it's thriving. And it is. But it's still so damn bright. So, I don't know, I've, I've told you this by saying, I, you know, the voters, the voters drive the bus. <clears throat> would I do it again? Yes. Andrew asked me earlier, would I change anything? No. I think we need more people with, with conviction, with, with maybe not the common sense to actually stand up and say what they think, not because they're scared. This is the first time in my life that I had people that were fearful to put my side of their front yard. And I'm going, I don't understand that. This is the first time that I sat all day in an election and saw 300 plus no signs by a group of people who don't even live here. In fact, we got to meet the six other people that basically came from surrounding counties, three or four counties away, that are financing that. The onslaught against our community uh, is, is scary. Ms. Hecke was 608 votes in her last election, 50. I don't know what to do, y'all, but it scares the Jews out of me uh, about what my community, what my home, the little past, what my girls are going to grow up into, what my son is going to have as a 20 year old. I end with this. As long as God gives me breath, It doesn't need to be in a council spot. It can be in whatever capacity he sees fit to throw me into. Uh, but thank you all. The 1,153 people, or 1,114 people who believe in me and took the time to go out and vote, I'm going to say thank you. It just wasn't enough. And I don't want to condemn this young lady to the journey she's on. I, God said this is the way it's going to happen. Well, it's that damn simple. That's hard for me. I'm a planner, I'm a doer, he's doing all these skills, but then I have to submit. Uh, that's a lesson that I'll get to learn through this process. But uh, I'll tell you, these people that are sitting up here taking this damn serious, and we're blessed to have them. They're not politicians. They're not those SOBs that we see uh, in the national media. They're truly people who care and are doing their best. Not always, maybe not always the right way, but they're doing their best. And my wish would be is that this council going forward has more uh, people in this audience that are here to help build this community and not tear it down. And uh, I hope you can evangelize that out of here and carry it forward. Know that I will uh, with a conviction and vigor probably not ever seen. Uh, again, thank you all. <coughs> Mayor, council members, thank you all very much for your time. Staff, please hold it. Just the beginning. We've got greatness. 600 and something lots just in this one. This doesn't even talk about the three or 4,000 lots that are in planning right now that we've already cycled on. That one's not seen. Uh, the horizon has got a huge wave coming, and it's a tsunami. And we're just barely prepared. So, with God's help, and, and you all, uh, thank you all. I'll keep on working. Thank you.
David. I'd like to say thank you for the last three years that I got to serve with you. Uh, it's, uh, it, we, have, we have accomplished a lot. It's been through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and everybody's been involved. Uh, it, it wasn't easy, but we've done really well, and I'm proud to say that I served with you. I want to add one thing. This is a hard one. <clears throat> We had a city manager that gave us how many years of his life? Probably 18 years. We couldn't say a gosh damn thing at the time. He did a great job. He couldn't do the job we needed for tomorrow. It is that simple. And then God puts this burden on him to be more right now. Four years, uh, I knew nothing about city politics or city, the way city work. I never served on an election position in my life. It was all new to me. And uh, being able to uh, serve with the um, city council as it is right now, and Mark included, uh, I was blessed by that. Uh, I always tell people I had a mule. Well, my grandfather had a mule one time. And, uh, he cried when he died. A mule kicking over the three of us. Bid him. I took off the gear, which can tank us. Hard to get along with. My grandpa cussed him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but the mule pulled the love. And when he died, grandpa cried. Uh, I'm not going to cry today. Uh, and you're not a mule. But <laughs> 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 well, there you go. We use that word. But he's carried ahead. Mother. 